My name is Emma Haley, and I am in Beijing, China. I will be telling you more about China. The population of China was three hundred ninety-three million seven hundred eighty-three thousand eight hundred thirty-six on July fourth, two thousand fourteen. That is a lot of people. A food liked in China is rice. Rice is mainly grown in southern China. Another loved food in China is noodles. The capital of China is. Is Beijing. It must be a big city. The main language in China is Mandarin Chinese. Did you know that in China, two thousand seventeen is the year of the rooster? The longest river is. In China is the Yangtze River. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in China. Did you know that? Hello, this is Rex Share from the summit, reporting from the summit of Mount Everest. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world, at twenty-nine thousand twenty-nine feet tall. Mount Everest is on the Nepal-China border. It is also known as Sagar Matha and Chumalungma. Two hundred and eighty-six people have died climbing it. Six hundred and sixty people have successfully climbed it. It takes two months to climb Mount Everest. It was formed 60 million years ago. The low spring temperature is negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit, and the highest temperature in spring is negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit. So wear your warm clothes. This is Rex Share signing off. The Himalayan Mountains. Hi, I'm Liliana Lee reporting from the base of the Himalayan Mountains. Mountain Range. The Himalayas are considered to be the tallest and youngest mountain ranges. They are only 50 to 70 million years young, but still, that's a pretty long time. They were caused by a continental collision between the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates, ending in the making of the Himalayan mountain ranges. The Himalayan mountains are prone to natural disasters such as earthquakes, tremors, and landslides. The Himalayas are also a habitat to exotic animals such as wild goat, Tibetan sheep, musk, deer, mountain goats, and snow leopards. To watch snow leopards, you have to climb further up the mountain. So where are the Himalayas, you might ask? This mountain range sprawls east to west from Afghanistan through Pakistan to India and to Nepal, Tibet through Bhutan, and finally ending in Myanmar. The Himalayan mountain range has a lot of snow. It just never really melts. The Himalayan mountain's temperature depends on elevation and location. Average summer temps can be up to 25 degrees Celsius, about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Winters can get really cold, so the Himalayas get a lot of snow. Although the Himalayan mountains formed around 50 to 70 million years ago, Mount Everest's history goes back a lot further. The sandstone and limestone rock at the summit of the mountain were once part of the sedimentary layers below sea level 450 million years ago. The explorer Noel Odell, Odell first found fossils embedded in Everest's rocks in 1924, proving that the mountain was once below sea level. I hope you learned something new about the Himalayas. So until next time, bye! Hi, this is Zoe Prezi reporting live from the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall's bricks are made from packed, stone, packed earth and stone. Mortar is used to stick bricks together. Did you know that the mortar for the Great Wall is made mainly from sticky rice? The recipe also includes flour and slaked lime, which is limestone heated to a high temperature and exposed to water. This is unusual because mortar is usually 
made from cement and sand. The wall is 13,170 13, miles long, 30 feet tall, and 2,300 years old. Wow, that's one long, tall, and old wall. As if that wasn't enough, and around some parts of the Great Wall, there is a moat. There's a moat. Why would someone build this wall so that the people of the, the people of China didn't have an invasion? Invasion. Who would want to build this? Emperor Qin Shi Huang began the construction of this wall. The wall started. The construction of the wall started in 770 and went through to 476 BC. And then construction was stopped and started up again in 1368 AD and, and, was ma and the wall was mainly finished in 1644. There were many watchtowers built into the Great Wall. Did you know that the Chinese invented the wheelbarrow and used it in the construction of the Great Wall? Sadly, a third of the Great Wall is gone because of townspeople and wear of time. The people that built the Great Wall were mostly peasants that were forced to do work or do forced labor, and, re and rebels, also known as people who were in jail. It was also the longest man-made structure in the world. No wonder it was one of the greatest, great seven wonders of the world 2017. Hello, Sunflower. We am here at the foot of Patala Palace. It is thir about 30 degrees Fahrenheit here in Lhasa, Tibet. And did you know that Patala Palace was once the tallest occupied building from 1653 to 1889? And that Patala Palace stands on Red Hill, which is 12,000 feet high. And it was once a meditation retreat for King Songsten Gampo. And because of this, it is also known as the Holy Palace of Tibet 10. And it took 48 years to build. It's too bad it was damaged during the Tibetan uprising when our Chinese artillery shells were launched into the palace. And because of this, Padua Palace was inscribed to the UN. ESCO World List, World's Most Historical List, in 1994. And now I'm going to check out the palace. Bye! Hello, this is Paige Woolsey reporting live from one of China's many schools. The students in China bring chopsticks, lunch aprons, toothbrush, and a handkerchief to school. In high school, they eat in regular lunchrooms like us. In elementary schools, they eat in their classrooms. At lunch, the older kids have jobs. Sixth, sixth graders get to grow food for their lunch. They eat noodles, hot dogs, apples, kebabs, juice, sushi, chicken rolls, and casseroles. They do rock, paper, scissors for extra food. They brush their teeth after lunch. The students help wash dishes. After lunch, they have to clean the whole school. I feel bad for them. They have no colleges or trained teachers. They have limited interactions with the world, and they are working on new technology and new sports clubs and electronic clubs. Hello, this is Ashley Wintershad reporting live from the Shunan Bamboo Forest in Shishiwan. Today I am here in this beautiful bamboo forest to tell you all about giant pandas. Giant pandas used to be on the endangered species list, but were taken off in 2016. You would think they would still be on the, on the endangered species list due to their major loss of habitat, bamboo forest. The way you say giant panda in Chinese is Sung Mao. Giant pandas are members of the bear family, and their lifespan is normally 20 years. Giant pandas' predators are jackals, snow leopards, and yellow-throated martens. Although these animals won't normally go after full-grown pandas, they will go after the babies.
It isn't really hard to tell if you've seen a giant panda. They have black ears, black patches around their eyes, and their legs and arms are black, and they have a a stripe of black touching from arm to arm and one leg to leg. They are also pretty fat. Ninety-nine percent of their daily diet consists of the leaves, stems, and shoots of different bamboo species. However, one percent of their diet comprises to other plants and even meat. I mean, if I were a giant panda, it would be the other way around. Ninety-nine percent meat and one percent of other plants. Although the dragon is a great and commonly used symbol of China, the giant panda appears just as often. But be careful. A giant panda is not as huggable as it looks. Although they are solitary, peaceful animals, if they think they are being threatened, let's just say, if you go up and try to hug one, it might not end too well for you. There have even been cases where giant pandas have attacked humans. So if you ever go to China and you get lost in the forest, don't go asking a giant panda for directions. My name is Emma Haley, and I'm reporting again, this time about ice cream. Did you know that ice cream was first made in China? I didn't. The first flavor of ice cream was probably a fruit flavor. I thought it was vanilla. How did the Chinese make ice cream, you ask? They made it by packing milk and rice into the snow at winter time. This is an amazing fact. Ice cream was first called cream ice. Also, the Chinese invented the first ice cream machine. Isn't that cool? I hope you like all my facts about ice cream. Hello, my name is Elena Bollinger, and today I will be talking to you about Chinese games. The Chinese yo-yo or pull bell. The two ends are round saucer shapes. In the middle is a horizontal piece of wood. Mount it on a string and twirl with a vibrating sound. It emits a humming sound. The shuttlecock. The shuttlecock consists of a small weighted circular base with feathers or tassels at one end. It is generally kicked with the toe, the heel, the instep, the inner and outer foot, as well as the knee. The kick is from a jump rather than a stationary move like a hop rather than this. Two levels of the game are called lesser accomplishments, which calls for kicking with one foot, and the greater accomplishments, which uses both feet. While the term shuttlecock usually refers to a ball in badminton, it is also referred, used to refer to this feather-covered toy. The Chinese Jump Rope the Chinese jump rope resembles more of a giant stretched out rather rubber band than our jump rope. It is a thin piece of elastic rope that is looped around two pairs of legs or, if you're all alone, two pairs of chair legs. Unlike the western jump rope, the object of the game is to hook your legs into the rope to form loops and patterns in a certain, certain sequence. This is often accompanied by a rhyme or song. As each level is completed, the rope is moved higher, making the patterns more difficult to complete. Hello, this is Xander from CN4U. In China, there has been an outbreak of crickets. Just kidding. I'm here to tell you about crickets. In China, crickets are considered a lucky charm to many people who believe in luck. Some people in China say if you kill a cr cricket, it brings bad luck, so kids don't step on crickets anymore. The reason people say a cricket is uh, a good luck charm is because of its ability to sing. It is also considered very disrespectful to mimic a cricket's chirp in China. Now for a joke. What's an insect's favorite sport? Cricket! Now let's talk about cricket fighting. Cricket fighting is a sport that involves the fighting of male crickets. Cricket fighting rarely causes injuries to the crickets. 
Cricket fighting dates back, back to 1,000 years ago, but is losing popularity in China. The players agitate their crickets by poking their antenna with a stick so they become aggressive. The crickets are made to fight until one, one runs from the other, stops chirping, or is thrown from the ring. Or even sometimes consumed. That usually doesn't happen, though. Many adults also participate in cricket fighting. Some even breed crickets specifically for battle. The cricket battling season is from August to September. The lifespan is a cr of a cricket is about three months. That's it for crickets. That one. Hello, and I'm back in front of a museum in China. And today I will be talking about Homo erectus. During excavations near Beijing, China, between 1929 and 1937, researchers discovered several partial skulls of the species Homo erectus. These hominoids lived around 400,000 years ago and came to be known as the Peking Man. The first complete skull cap discovered at the Peking Man site was unearthed by a Chinese team in a candlelit pit in 1929. The sloping forehead and thick brow ridge in front and protruding optical torus in back are typical Homo erectus features. Homo erectus was the first to use fire in sophisticated tools. They produced stone axes and used sharp stone cleavers and finger-sized scrapers to s used to slice off chewable sizes of meat. Wow! Homo erectus's nickname was Samu. Samu lived in China and many other places. Homo erectus was taller than earlier human ancestors. For instance, one of the most complete fossil skeletons ever found, a 1.5 million year old specimen of a younger male, six, 10 to 16 year old, known as the Turkana boy, may have grown up to be 6 feet 1 inch tall as an adult, though other estimates put his maximum height at a more modest 5 feet 4 inches. But 3.2 million year old Australopithecus, I don't know, skeleton named Lucy was just 3 feet 7 inches. That is short. Breaking news fortune cookies weren't really invented in China. Actually, fortune cookies are very little known in China. Wait. But if they weren't invented in China, then where were they invented? Well, fortune cookies were invented in 1918 by David Jung in a bakery in San Francisco, California called Ben Kyoto. A fortune cookie is a crisp cookie usually made of flour, sugar, vanilla, and sesame seed oil. The very first fortune cookies were made by chopsticks. Before the 20th century, fortune cookies were made by hand. But the fortune cookie industry changed dramatically when Chuck E. from Oakland, California, invented the fortune cookie machine. The machine produced a great amount of cookies at a time. Inside the cookie, there is a little slip of paper with a fortune on the front side and a Chinese phrase with a translation or a set of lucky numbers on the back. In the 19th century, a cookie similar in appearance to the modern fortune cookie was invented in Kaito, Japan. However, the cookie was a bit bigger and had a darker dough, and it contained sesame seed oil, and it contained sesame and miso rather than butter and vanilla. It does include a fortune, but it is wedged into the bend of the cookie rather than placed in the hollow, hollow portion. In 1992, wonton food attempted to expand its fortune cookie business into China, but gave up after the fortune cookies were considered too American. However, in 1889, fortune cookies were imported into Hong Kong and sold as genuine American fortune cookies. They are now served in Brazil, Canada, France, India, Italy, Mexico, the United Kingdom, as well as other countries. Each year around the world, there are approximately 3 billion fortune cookies made the vast majority used for consumption in the United States. And really, most people don't even eat the cookie. They just get it for the fortune. Honestly, I think the cookie part kind of tastes like styrofoam. So next time you go to a Chinese restaurant 
and you get a fortune cookie. Open it and think where it all came from and what went into making it.